So we shall now go on to our first speaker, a very eminent Dr. Krishna Prasad, who heads the Pediatric and Glaucoma Services in M.M. Joshi Eye Institute and has always been in the forefront of ophthalmic education, spearheading the efforts of PG education program. He has a learning tip for us today. And on to you, Dr. Krishna Prasad. Thank you. So we always despise vitreous. We hate vitreous coming without invitation in our cat like surgery. But this is a situation where we start loving it all. This is a, a routine day where the surgeon is starting his cat track. He has started his flexes. Now, problem is a danger at the end of the trench. So he is trying to play it suddenly. Kind of overdoes it at the end of the trench, and he must have probably crossed this limit. But he thinks that probably things are gone when he continues because nothing is really happening, really out of his expectation. Somehow he thinks that things are not going his way. So things are not really happening the way it should move. There is some obstacle somewhere, but the people seem to be intact. They seem to be as such that he can actually help it. Now he is emulsifying the pieces. But with little uh, doubt in his mind, now he thinks that there is something wrong at the end of the periphery of the capsule. He turns it down, moves the eye, other way around, he finds a large length in the capsule, this is the periphery. So now he takes a, a premium viscoelastic and he plugs that hole. So now that we have a platform on which he can continue to emulsify this rest of the nucleus very comfortably with that. With viscoelastic seal, there is a vitreous at the back, the viscoelastic bridges the gap, creates a platform. Again, he is doing that to create an, another platform to lift up all the epidemics. Now, of course, he has to do an automatic vitreous and the capsule support in form of rexis helps him to put the uh, three piece lens in the sulcus and then an optic. What an intact vitreous. A sulcus in trying to create a scaffold with the But what if there is no vitreous at all? In the situation where a vitrectomy has happened, you can see a cataract in the posterior part. It is suspected. All the preparation in mind, he goes in and he starts his surgery. He wants to make sure that he can operate something like a at like expecting a problem. Axis was it, and he doesn't do any hydro deception. He just tries to mobilize the nucleus minimally, and he has also kept his IOP low. Problems starts surgery. Trying to act like is not very difficult in terms of hardening. He takes it. Things are going good, and now he's trying to remove one piece without dialing the nucleus. In the displacement and the back disappears. Now he's trying to do the same thing. He's trying to put so much viscoelastic, it's just feeling the vitreous cavity going down that lane, not lifting the pieces up. As in the previous case, there is no platform or a scaffold on which he can continue. He continues still in vain, trying to put that viscoelastic to create a scaffold, but in vain. So he has to really try multiple times to. Do the same thing, but not all that. A lot of things have gone down that piece. Now he's trying to salvage the situation, he's trying to remove as much as possible from the anterior. And now his team is coming. He's trying to make way for them, so he tries to tell as much work. And now the optical surgery gets up to the so he will remove now, there's no vitreous. Yeah, now he's going to remove all the part. You can see a large PC lender. The vector between those in that are going to remove all the pieces that have been dropped inside. And on the same uh, way, three pieces. In this vitreous is a gift since it is. Problem. Oh, you're losing your voice in between. 
We lost your voice a lot, Dr. Krishna Prasad. Anyway, I hope everybody did uh, pay attention to the video. I have some questions for you for both the first and the second video, uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad. Yeah. Uh, the first video, as you can see, that uh, the trench which you created seemed to go further deep in. Yeah. And there was a little surge. Maybe that was when that uh, PCR could have happened. At one point, I found that vitrectomy was being done through the main port. I want the message to be conveyed why it shouldn't. And of course, you have not used the ever popular tricot in your cases. That was uh, the first video. I think probably the whole video has not been, I mean, all the steps have not been shown the first video. The tricot, somehow I have a different idea about tricot. When you think that there is a vitreous that you can see, I don't use a tricot. When you see there is no vitreous, then probably that is why you can use a dilute tricot, probably to delineate any vitreous sun which are figure to invisible. We have used tricot, but uh, probably that is not in the edited form of the video. And about the vitrectomy, of course, you have to use the side port so as you can maintain the chamber so no more vitreous comes in. But in the initial part, you can still go ahead with the main port if there is a lot of vitreous coming into the anterior chamber. Well, you can use uh, some amount of uh, I mean, uh, vitrectomy through the main port, but once you probably go ahead with the vitrectomy, it is the best thing to probably go through the side port, keep the main port you know, closed so that you have uh, some kind of a pressure so that no more vitreous actually come to the anterior chamber. At the I same time, probably one more uh, thing is for the youngsters is if there are already small, small pieces around the anterior chamber, if you go with the irrigation and the vitrector to the side port, that irrigation itself can push those free pieces into the uh, vitreous cavity by the red. So I think you need to take care of that first and then probably... Uh, going with an irrigating the uh, More importantly, you could have used an IOL scaffold for both these cases. Uh, that is also there, which you need to counter. As far as your second case is concerned, I noticed your parameters. You have kept your longitudinal at zero. I wanted the opinion of the experts uh, whether uh, during chop a little bit of longitudinal gets to uh, give a better purchase on the nuclear fragment is one thought. And I saw your IFP ramp also. In a vitrectomized eye, you know, the minute the PC opens, everything would drop down. So this IOP ramp, if it is uh, made a little slower, then okay. it, there will not, the pressurizing of the uh, chamber would be taken care of, especially in high myopes and these post vitrectomized eyes. Yeah, so, I think the point well taken. Yeah. I hope RAM could have been little on the you know slower side. Okay. Yes, and uh, that would probably add to the decreasing the you know I hope measurement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, thoughts of the experts in both these cases, Dr. Mahipal, you would want to say something? Uh, thank you, KP, for for an excellent uh, presentation. In the first instance, happy only to everyone. Uh, uh, the first case that uh, uh, Dr. Krishna Prashad showed was actually the side port. One thing which is very important is that we often do not concentrate much on the side port. And uh, uh, Rohit Om Prakash has very nicely showed in cases of IFIS that you can uh, reduce the incidence of uh, the IFIS or the complications associated with them if you have a proper smaller structured side port where the, uh, the uh, chopper just goes in without a leak. So if you go back to your video or you see the main problem or the male culprit was that the side port was uh, this thing. There was a bellowing of the iris and the side port that was coming out at that particular time. So I think uh, there is no harm done uh, if you can just disregard that side port and create a new side port if you are having uh, problems uh, with the, the uh, iris coming out from that. Because whenever the iris keeps coming out, uh, there is a progressive uh, narrowing of the pupil and that causes the problems which are there. And uh, I am uh, uh, really uh, uh, in agreement with the Dr. Chitra on two points. The first is the IUL scaffold. If you can actually, the, the cataracts were uh, reasonably soft in both the cases. If they, it is hard, then uh, doing an interior chamber phaco emulsification can have deleterious effects on the endothelium. But uh, uh, in cases where the cataracts were not very hard, as we can see in these cases, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, an IOL scaffold and bring out the because there the situation becomes much more controlled as you saw that there were a lot of fragments which went down as you kept on doing the FACO and uh, which you had to pick it out uh, later. 
so iul scaffold is a good technique that has been described by amar and uh, the second thing is the, the use of tricot whether you see uh, vitreous or you don't see vitreous i don't think it's very difficult because the main idea is what you see is not actually what what there is so until of course you have tricot you may be missing out uh, uh, the uh, vitreous that is there and yes the parameters need to be altered immediately when you have a pcr uh, you need to inject with elastic take a deep breath and see as to what exactly uh, needs to be done so those are couple of the points but uh, yes you showed uh, both nice videos where uh, i have uh, uh, given my inputs as to what i would I think have one other important point especially in these post vitreoidized eyes it's very important to see that ensure that you don't do a hydro at all it should be hydro delineation there might have been an inadvertent hydro which could have also caused that pcr uh, dr kamal do you have anything to add uh, i think uh, I, i agree with dr maypal a lot of times side port is an orphan child ignored by the surgeon uh, we are already all concentrating on uh, the architecture of a main wound side port is a big culprit uh, in making your pupil go down on you a lot of times even in a normal case because if the side port is leaky the pupil comes there and your instrument keeps rubbing on it and before you realize before you can say mr jack robinson you have a small pupil and then you start struggling but this pupil will not enlarge even if you put anril in now because you're constantly irrigating it or in irritating it so it's a good idea to make a new side port as dr maypal said one thing as i saw uh, dr krishna prakash putting an iwell on the same day uh, i even in the dos uh, dr namrata was there dr maypal was there god forbid uh, i have a, a pc rent what i do is i do whatever is required with it me i close the eye i do not i repeat i do not put the iwell on the same day as a rule and i've been doing this for so many years and it has paid off i think one big reason is uh, the stress is off you number 2 is uh, you already declared to the patient that the iwell is not in so he should expect no vision or low vision for at least 7 to 12 days whatever time you decide to put the second lens point number 3 is that the anterior and the posterior capsule do get adhered and they are a bit stronger they are a bit tough for the iwell to land in and fourth most important is that everything is settled by the time you open the eye again there's less of vitreous disturbance in the anterior chamber and the patient has already got used to a lower vision so if a patient is coming to you and you put the iwell on the first day and he lands up with 612 he's a unhappy patient but if you told him that there was a bag which got compromised and you'll be putting the lens for sure after 10 to 12 days and then even if he lands up with 612 so from a finger counting vision for a week or so when he gets 612 he's more than fairly happy so that's what at least we do in our practice god forbid there is a pc rent we do not put the iwell on the same day we give a gap of 7 to 10 days and then put the iwell dr ramurthy would you want to counter that before we go on to our next uh, talk ram you are muted muted <clears throat> nice videos krishna prasad they enjoyed your videos uh, one thing which is brought out nicely by the second video was that we have to differentiate between a post vitreoidized eye and a eye which has received a injection you know intravitreals because in a post vitreoidized eye the scaffold is not there so when there is a pre existent uh, pcr then the tendency for the lens matter to slip in the posterior segment is much much higher while in the case of a injection which has created a, um, a pc touch then quite often the, it gets fibros and the tendency for lens matter slip in a little less and in these cases if the cataract follows very quickly there's no hurry to go ahead and uh, do the cataract surgery sometimes if you wait uh, for a, a couple of weeks then that uh, point of touch actually gets fibrosed and even though there is a damage to the posterior capsule the tendency for lens material to slip in is uh, significantly minimized as regards uh, uh, what tamal's observations very interesting but i think most of us because we have the web with all to manage these cases reasonably well especially if the uh, rexis is intact and we can slip in a lens in the sulcus we'll go ahead and do that if obviously if it's i'm not talking about kamal but if it's an inexperienced surgeon and the surgery is going on under topical anesthesia and you're not confident of uh, how you're going to handle it maybe the lens bag is completely lost then waiting another day and uh, um, getting it uh, doing it uh, obviously might give you much better results but uh, most often uh, i think if you are especially putting a lens in the sulcus 
uh, or if it's under um, peribulbar block and you want a scleral fixation or a iris clip lens, it's possible to do it on the same day. But I'm sure uh, Kamal's technique works well in his hands. So I'll also wish to uh, add on to what Ram said. Uh, actually, uh, see, there is a psychological impact on the patient. Okay, you have lens not fit kiya. patients. Uh, the relatives also go from one place to another place. They go to another doctor, etc. And that's a uh, that could be problematic. Uh, uh, somebody said, what Those kind of things. Uh, see, it all depends on what uh, the word uh, Dr. Ram used was where if also what if you have the proper uh, skill set or you have a posterior segment colleague with you, you have the vitrectomy machine, we convert it. Uh, if it, even if it is being done at a topical, you give a parabulbar or you can uh, put a suture, give a peribulbar and continue with the procedure. So if you have the wherewithal, you have the three-piece lens that you want for a glued IOL or to do a vitrectomy at that time, uh, that's much better in my opinion. But the only thing is that one should not uh, overreach. That means that if uh, it is somebody and uh, who is not trained to handle that, then under those circumstances, what you are saying is that you uh, close the eye and uh, you live to fight another day. That uh, I agree. But uh, in these circumstances that you have a retina backup, which we always have in our uh, uh, primary centers, uh, I would immediately call the retina colleague and um, have the thing uh, sorted out at that particular moment because often you do tend to, because these are difficult cases and you do tend to get corneal edema in these cases if there is a problem. And that takes uh, a week, 10 days, uh, 14 days to go and that is the time when the desperation of the patient goes up very high. So uh, those are my thoughts about it, uh, uh, that if you have the uh, technique, you have the equipment, you have the instrumentation, you have the expertise, uh, go ahead and uh, finish off the surgery at that particular moment rather than postponing it if you can. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishna Prasad, for two wonderful videos which brought in a lot of discussion. We could do a lot more too, but I think we should move on. Do stay connected with us and you're most welcome to chip in as and when you want. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.